everybody, it's me Sandy and I'm back with another nail art video and yep, it's another gradient. I sure do love doing ombre and gradient designs. For this hollow sunset gradient, I'm going to use three polishes from the April Hollow Hookup Box. But before we get started, if I could just ask you to do a huge favor, and that's go down and hit that like button, as well as subscribe if you aren't already, as well as hit the post notification bell so you can find out when I upload a new video. So now, let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to start off with my favorite base coat, and that's Anchor by Zoya. And sorry, I was playing with a new tripod, so some of my camera angles are just a little off. And as you can see, I've actually already got a coat of Orly Nailtrition on underneath to help my uh, nails grow a bit better. I am growing out the damage, and it's actually going pretty good. So before doing my gradient, I'm starting off with my Color Club French Tip White, and I have already done my right hand off camera. And as usual, all products that I use will be listed in the description box. Because I'm using a holographic polishes to do my gradient, it's best to start off with the white as a base so that all those holographic colors just pop. So before I get started with my gradient, I'm going to put on some of this Manny Mask. This is a non-latex cuticle protect uh, barrier. I don't know if you call it barrier protector. You know, the stuff you put around your cuticles to keep your cleanup to a minimum. It will peel off like things like Simply Latex. And no, this again isn't sponsored, but I'm just so happy that Bundle Monster came out with one that is latex free for those of us with latex allergies that I just can't talk about it enough. So from Glisten Glow, I've got Kiss My Tulips, and then from Different Dimensions, it's Tulip Mania, and then from Cupcake Polish, it's Shut Your Tulips. And again, these are from the Hollow Hookup Box from April. So I'm just using a dollar store makeup sponge, and I'm just going to put a line of each polish. And sorry, I am working with a new tripod and a new readjusting lighting and distance, and it's really, really hard for you to see what I'm doing if I don't have my hand where the camera should be so that you can see. But I am laying a line of polish on of each color on my um, sponge, and I'm doing it with the yellow at the bottom and the purple at the top and as once I have that nice and soaked enough there you can see if it squeezes out a little polish then you've got enough and if it doesn't you need to add a little more like I did there with the wonderful purple color as well as adding a bit more of the pink hollow to make sure that my sponge is saturated enough before we start placing it on the nail. Now that I've got my sponge fully saturated like I want it, I'm just going to line that up and just kind of rub it back and forth and then just dab across the nail. When you feel the sponge starting to stick, you know that that's when it's time to add some more polish. And always on your second or third go around, like if you're not lining it up properly, then I just 
re-stamp over and try not to muddy it, but then I just dab it over and it actually just clears up so that I get enough of each color on my nail. My nails are very short, so I have to be careful how large I make my gradients. So if I'm doing a gradient on all of my nails and I keep going around without any breaks in between, usually by the time I'm done my tenth nail, I can go back and do the second round on my first nail without having to change sponges, just with keeping reloading the polish on the sponge and just carrying on dabbing sponging along. If I take a break and the sponge dries out, I do have to cut the top off and reload it. But they're dollar store sponges, they're not expensive, so I don't worry about it too much. And then you just keep doing this, loading up your sponge, dabbing it on your nail, and going around with different coats until you've got the opacity and the gradient that you want. So once I was happy with how my gradient was looking, it's time to pull off the Manny mask. Now, in some cases, I didn't put it on thick enough and had a little bit of trouble taking it off, but in most cases, it wasn't too bad. It did peel off, and unfortunately, again, I was not paying attention to where my hand was positioned on the camera because I was so focused on using this Manny mask. So I do apologize, but again, I did just peel the Manny mask off and clean up any areas that were not covered or where I had trouble getting the Manny mask off. And then it was time to put on my first quick dry top coat. So before I start stamping on my design, I do like to put on a coat of quick dry top coat. I am using Sesh Vite. It's also a great idea to put a top coat over a gradient because it really smooths out any of the bumpiness, makes the gradient really shine through. And I do prefer a smooth surface for stamping. I just think the stamping comes out much better that way. Now it's time to get stamping and I am going to use a lot of images from this plate from Uber Chic called Vacation Mode. Uh, I'm sorry for flipping that back and forth. I'm also going to use my black stamping polish from Clear Jelly Stamper as well as my um, actual stamper from them. I decided to go with the classic palm trees and island theme for this considering it was for a Manny challenge and I just wanted to kind of show off the um, gradient really nicely and just kind of made me think of a really nice tropical sunset. Sorry, I'm not going into too much of a step-by-step -step tutorial on stamping in this video because this tutorial is already a bit long, but if a how-to stamping tutorial is something that you would like me to film and post, please let me know in the comments section. 
So to seal in my stamp design, I'm using something called Smearknot by Clear Jelly Stamper. Um, there are other types of non-smear stamping polishes you can use whichever one you like. I happen to really like this one and it's a Canadian product so it makes me feel good to buy it because I'm Canadian but uh, I like to use this because it doesn't smear my design and then I usually follow up once it's dry with a coat of sèche vite just to really seal in my designs and protect my manicure. I'm so happy with how this holographic sunset manicure turned out. I think these colors work perfectly for the look that I was going for. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and if that's the case please go down and hit that like button as well as hit the subscribe button and post notification bell so you can find out when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.